Now that we've taken a look at how a hypothesis test can be conducted for a claim about a single variance, we can extend this to the next level and look at a hypothesis test on a claim of two variances. And so the question we're going to answer is how do we compare two variances? And similar to one variance, we have to be careful if we're talking about standard deviation or variance, because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. But different than the single variance is we need to introduce a new distribution that models a comparison of two variances. And this new distribution is what we will call the F distribution. The F distribution, because this distribution is used as a fraction when comparing two variances. Similar to the chi-squared distribution, the F distribution is not symmetrical. In fact, it is also skewed right. Also, similar to the chi-squared is its shape is different based, I should say different shape. based on degrees of freedom. But what's really unique about the F distribution is it's a fraction of two variances. In other words, we're going to have a ratio, or let's just go ahead and call it a fraction, or a ratio, with two sets of degrees of freedom. We say the numerator has degrees of freedom for the numerator is equal to the first sample size minus 1. And the denominator is going to be the degrees of freedom of the denominator is equal to the second sample size minus 1. And what's interesting is as the degrees of freedom get larger for both the denominator and the numerator, the curve becomes more normal. One last thing to talk about the F distribution is similar to the chi-squared, the F is always positive or always greater than, I guess it could be equal to 0. So that's kind of a brief introduction of the F distribution. We're going to use our calculator to do most of the calculations with the F distribution. What we're interested in is can we set up and carry out a hypothesis test on two variances? The test statistic for two variances is simply the fraction, the first variance, divided by the second variance, or the standard deviation squared divided by the standard deviation squared. If both variances are equal, if we have equal variances, that tells us that f is going to equal to 1. We're dividing everything by itself. If we have different variances, f is closer to 0 if the second variance is larger, or infinity if the first variance is larger. 
We'll use our calculator actually to do most of the work for the F statistic. And so just really briefly how to do that. First, you're going to hit the Stat button. And then you can scroll over to Tests. Then you can scroll down to to samp f test. And that's where we can access the two sample f test for the comparing of our variances. Then to actually enter in our data, you want to make sure that stats is highlighted. And then you can enter the standard deviation. Notice I did not say the variance. Even though we're comparing variances with the f test, the calculator wants us to enter in the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. So we can enter the standard deviation and our other data. Other than that, the hypothesis test is going to work exactly like all the other hypothesis tests we've seen before. So let's try an example and see if we can do a test of two variances. Quality control is interested. in the variance of two machines making widgets. The first make 32 widgets. with a variance in the radius. Apparently, there's a circle on these widgets of 4.1 millimeters. The second makes 37 widgets. with a variance in the radius of 3.7 millimeters. At the alpha equals 0.05 level, can quality control Conclude the first machine has a higher variance We'll start by setting up our null and alternative hypothesis, like always. The null hypothesis always has equity. So we're assuming with our null hypothesis that the variance of the first machine is equal to the variance of the second machine. The alternative hypothesis is that the variance of the first machine is greater, because we want the first machine to be higher than the variance of the second machine. For our degrees of freedom, 
the degrees of freedom of the numerator, we always do our division in order as listed in the hypothesis test. So we're going to do the variance Oops, the variance of the first machine divided by the variance of the second machine. Same order as they're in the hypothesis test. So the first machine is our numerator. The first machine made 32 widgets, meaning the degrees of freedom of the numerator are 31. The degrees of freedom in the denominator, the denominator being the second machine, which made 37 widgets, one less would be 36 for the degrees of freedom. So our distribution is that we have an F statistic that is distributed as an F with 31 and 36 degrees of freedom. And we can calculate our test statistic by just dividing those variances. Notice we're given the variances. The variance is 4.1, and the variance is 3.7. They've already been squared. So the first variance is 4.1 divided by the second variance of 3.7. That gives us 1.1081. So if we were to draw a picture of this situation, the F distribution skewed right. We have a test statistic right at 1.0181. We want to be greater. So we go for the right tail. How much area is in that right tail? Well, this is where we're going to go to our calculator to find our p-value. First, we're going to hit stat, scroll over to test. And then we're going to scroll down for the two sample F test. Oop, there it is. Two sample F test. I'm going to enter in the statistics. And it wants my first standard deviation, not the variance. The calculator is asking for the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. Fortunately, I can just type in the square root with the second, and then the square root key is above the square, diagonal from the 7. And my first variance was 4.1. So if the variance is 4.1, the standard deviation is the square root of 4.1. And when I hit Enter, it's going to calculate that value for me. The first sample size had 32 widgets in it. The second machine had a variance of 3.7. So we'll take the square root of 3.7 to get the standard deviation of 1.92. And the second machine made 37 widgets. For our alternate hypothesis, we said that the first is greater than the second. So we'll select greater than and go down and hit Calculate. Notice it gives us the exact same F statistic that we found, 1.1081. But what we're really interested in is it gives us a p-value of 0 0.309. So let me scroll a bit. Give me a little more space to work. We have a p-value of 0 0.3809. Remember, the p-value is the probability the null hypothesis is true. So we will say the probability, or based on our sample, the probability both machines have the same variance, that's the null hypothesis that they're equal, is 38.09%. And the alpha tells us the probability required to disprove 
that null hypothesis. We have to drop below 5%. We're well above the 5%. So we're ready to make a decision, which is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is that the p-value is greater than alpha. There's too much evidence in support of the null hypothesis. Specifically with numbers, 0.3809 is greater than 0.05. And so for our final conclusion, which is always written in the context of the alternative hypothesis, leave the alternative on there, is that there is insufficient or there is not sufficient evidence to conclude the first machine has a higher variance than the second machine. And that is how we can compare two variances. So we have a new distribution, the f distribution, which is a fraction of the variances. But the idea is still the same as our hypothesis test we've been doing. We've got our null and alternative hypothesis. The test statistic gives us an area, a p-value that we compare to alpha and make a conclusion whether or not we have sufficient evidence to believe the alternative hypothesis. Take a look at a few of these on your own if you'd like. We'll talk about uh, comparing two variances more in class, and I'll look forward to seeing you then.